They don't get it. So we're dealing with marriage a little bit. I'll give you a little background on marriage, what marriage is. Amen. Amen. And we'll let you know what marriage is. Marriage is a marriage is a contract. Number one, marriage is a contract. Somebody say contract. Contract. Covenant. Covenant. It's a binding contract Amen. between two spouses. Establishing rights, obligations, rights, obligations between those spouses, as well as between any resulting biological or adopted children affinity. Wow. Wow. Marry, when you marry her, you marry her children. When you marry him, you marry his children. Oh, come on. Y'all looking at me like... See, I, I don't understand people that's so much in love with someone, but they don't like the children. I love you, but I hate your children. Let me give you a little advice. If you ever run across a man that loves you, but ain't studying your children, that is not the God sent man for you. If you ever run across a woman that loves you, but don't love your children... She is not the God sent woman for you. Now, I ain't saying she ain't what you want. She ain't the one for you. And he ain't the one for you. And people need to have that dialogue before you get married. Do, do you want a ready made family? Yes or no? Because most women today, the average woman do have one or two children. Tell the truth. Especially in church. So if they can't deal with that in marriage, they probably ain't the one for you. It ain't. See, no, you go on fast, fast, and pray about it all you want to. That child is still going to be there when you come off that fast. Amen. Hopefully that child will still be there. Uh-huh. And get an amen. It went over like a couple of ice. Amen. So number one, you got to understand that marriage is a binding contract. It's serious, amen? amen? Number two tip. You need to love God. Love God. I might not be going in quite order now. I gave my wife a syllabus of line. But you need to love God and put him first in your marriage. Amen. Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 30. 33, could you read that for me, please? Matthew 6 and verse 33. Amen? The importance of putting God first in your marriage. Some people say they got a marriage and God is not first. You got to love God. You got to put him first. What do we say? Matthew 6 and 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. But seek ye first the kingdom. And his righteousness. And his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. And all of these things shall be added unto you. So if you're thinking about marriage, always make sure that you have a relationship with God. God first. God first. People second. I'm going to say it again. God first and people second. Some women love their husband more than they love God. Some men love their wives more than they love God. Now, baby, you don't get it twisted. The reason why I got this woman to God is because of God. That's why I'm married to a lady, John. That's why she married to me. It's because I believe God joined us together. So without God in the equation, I probably never would have met her. She probably never would have met me. Oh, yeah, you can go out there and find your own stuff. Can I be real? You can go out there and search and find your own. But it's better when God joins you with somebody. Amen? So let's deal with this thing. So it's number two. That's number two. Now let's deal with the original number two. Number three. Deal with the original purpose of marriage. Pastor, it's better to marry than to birth. Stop quoting that, that scripture by itself. It's not a foolish scripture. It's a wise scripture. Yeah. But you got to understand, you do not want to take that and build a doctrine on that. Amen. The original purpose of marriage was for companionship. Amen. All the other stuff that comes along with that marriage, the intimacy, that's a blessing. That's just extra. Y'all look at me like I'm crazy. Go to Genesis chapter number 2 and verse 18. It's going to tell us the original purpose of marriage. 2 and 18. 
Genesis 2 and verse 18. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18 says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that a man should be alone. I will make him a help me for him. Adults need adults companionship. So the purpose of the, of the wife, God presenting and making a wife, preparing a wife with a man was for companionship. It wasn't for intimacy. Ooh, that busts a lot of religious oh. bubbles. The original purpose is not for you to get your groove on. Oh, Lord. I'm sorry for y'all ears that sort of innocent ears, but that's not the purpose of it. And so many people marry to get their groove on, and they get into that marriage, and it's not a happy marriage. Because it takes more than that to make a marriage. See, can, we, can, can we stop being religious? Woo, child, you all that in a bag of chips. He's very narrow-minded. I don't care if he's prophesying, I don't care if he's preaching, I don't care what position he is in the body of Christ. If that's all he see you is as... Is a sex object. He's very narrow minded. And he's very juvenile. Don't ever, you need to find out are you into me for who I am? Or are you into me for my body? Oh, come on now. Let me stop being religious. Have that conversation. And you need to have that conversation before you go to the altar. Because once you get into that marriage, you cannot get out of it if you're married wrong. You stuck like Chuck. Right. <laughs> Here's another part of marriage. First Peter chapter three verse seven. We deal. Let's deal with communication. Did we deal with that? He said companionship. That's no more. That's a, that's that's another thing right there. Companionship. Here's another thing. First Peter three and verse seven. Go ahead and read that. Please. Likewise, ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife. As unto the weaker vessel. The man has the onus on him to understand his wife. Today, in today's church, men want their wife to understand them. No, 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 no. That's not a reason how it was set up. It was up to, to the man to figure out his wife, not the woman to figure out her husband. Now, we do that. I do some marriage counseling, and I'm going to tell you to talk to your husband, listen to your husband, figure out your husband. But the onus to learn. It's going to be on the man to learn his spouse. Read it again. I'm coming out the word of God. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. The average man will say in America, she don't understand me. My next question for him, do you understand her? Do you understand her? Because you're saying she don't understand me. When the Bible clearly, clearly tells me that a man is supposed to dwell with her according to knowledge. Here's another thing. Give it on on her. You're supposed to give that woman some honor. The woman need honor. You need to respect her. Oh, Lord. If you can't respect your wife, what other woman can you respect? I hate to see men claim they can respect their mama, but they disrespect their wife. You don't, you don't respect your mother. It's impossible to respect your mother if you disrespect your wife. Impossible. Well, you know, whatever mama say, he'll do it. But when it comes to her, his wife, he won't do nothing. Jesus. Something is twisted about their relationship. Right. Something is abnormal about their relationship. When he can do everything mama say, but when his wife say something, he has a drawback. Yeah. That's perverted. Y'all looking at me, go ahead and look and laugh. Because that is a perverted relationship. If your mother have more control over you than your wife, you should have married your oh Lord, I ain't gonna endorse that because that's ancestral. But see, you're in an ancestral ment mental relationship with your with your mom. It's ancestral, ain't it? If your mama have more control over you than your wife, you respect your mother more than your wife, that's almost ancestral. Amen. All right? So women that's looking for a husband, a husband, a woman, that's, the man said he want, he, he, want, he want to be with you. Number one, see how he respects his mom. He respects his mom fine. And then see how he respects you. That's right. Do we actually 
seriously take the time to open the door for you? Or is he going to come busting up in there and hope that you catch it? I seen men do that. They come busting up in the door and the woman, the little children walking around like ducks, they trying to find the hammer. Jesus. Men don't want to open the car anymore for their wives. They don't want to get a wife that honor that she deserves. All right. Here's another one. Love each other. Oh, Lord. Supposed to love, Pastor. I know you're gonna say something about love. Number, num this is gonna be like number number four. Love, dealing with love, love each other. You're supposed to love each other. Y'all wanna know that? Before you marry someone, you need to really make sure you love them and not lust them. See, sometimes we need to say the men need to say, "I lust you," instead of saying, "I love you." They need to say, "I lust you." Okay, they shouldn't say that. But that's what they be doing. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Please read that for me. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Dealing with marriage. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. Keep reading. And gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Christ loved the church so much and God so loved the world that he died for us. See, the average man, he's got to be willing. If you love that woman so much, you're willing to take a bullet for her. Amen? Step in front of a knife for her. Some men, the burger break in the house, <laughs> husband going to get in the bathroom lock yourself in there. Baby, children, y'all feel for y'all self. I got to call 911. See, but he, the Bible says you got to love him enough, even as Christ loved the church. So the man got to really love this woman. Here's a question for you. Do you love the one you plan on getting married to? I ain't say like. I didn't say appreciate. I didn't say friendship. Do you really have God-given love for your wife? A fiance. Let's go to the word of God. Romans chapter 13 and verse number 10. Romans chapter 13 and verse 10. 13 and verse 10 says, Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. If you say that you walk in love, how is it that you cannot love your spouse? I don't want to hear no preacher ever tell me that he's a man of God and he walks in love and he hates his wife. Because the love worketh no evil toward anyone. How is it that I've been in marriage counseling session when a man is tearing up his wife, a woman is tearing up her husband, and I'm sitting back there about to cry because I can't believe these two folks, they really got married. I can't believe. I'm talking about the church, y'all. I can't believe that they actually got married. Why? God obviously didn't tell you to get married. You tearing your spouse up. You destroying your husband. You making him look like trash. You making your wife look like trash. And I'm sitting back there, Lord, have mercy. I got so mad one day on somebody, somebody, I bam the table. I said, make it work. Y'all in church, make it work. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. And that wasn't a devil. He got their attention. And they saw how juvenile that looked. They saw how silly it was to be taken to Love working no evil toward his neighbor. Okay, here we go. Y'all in the confrontation, women and men. Somebody need to be quiet. If you ever marry someone and you don't know how to shut up, you need to ask the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, help me to be quiet. I can't, I don't, Holy Ghost help me to shut my mouth. Ain't nothing wrong say, Lord help me to shut my mouth. Because when you start talking and screaming and hollering, if you don't watch it, you might be throwing stuff. Jesus. Hmm. Can I get an amen? amen. So love working on you towards the neighbor. 
First Peter chapter 4, verse 8. This ain't one of them screaming hallelujahs. This is for somebody because it's time for the church folks to stop being fake. It's time to be dropped. It's time that, that in the body of Christ, we just be real about this situation. Too long till we, we'll shout about it. You still got the same problem if you finish out. Your husband still don't respect you. You still hate you married him. Stop shouting and start going to God and praying. First Peter chapter 4 verse 8. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Charity is going to cover some stuff up. <laughs> charity will cover flaws in your spouses. The job is when you get married, is to be, I'm Mama J covering. She is my covering. It is not her job to pull the cover off of me. It is not my job to pull the cover off of her. We cover each other. Now she ain't going to write with me if I'm wrong. She's going to tell me I'm wrong. But you don't know about it. Y'all ain't going to all know all my business. Amen. Facebook ain't going to know all my business. You know when a man is at odds with his wife because she posts some stuff on Facebook. She posts some stuff on Facebook. Apparently they at it again. Here they go. Bing, 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 bing. He's over here. Bing, 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 bing. Instead of going to each other like mature adults and saying, this is what's going on. That's right. Can we talk it out? Can we pray about it? And talk it out. Yeah. And see God's face. Charity covers a multitude of sin. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 19. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Husbands, love your wives and don't be bitter against them. I've seen this a lot of times in marriage counseling. Over the eight, over all these years I've been pastoring, y'all don't know who I'm talking about. I've been pastoring a long time and I've counseled a whole bunch of folks. But I will say this. Husband, be not bitter towards your wife. No matter what happened in your marriage, try not to let a root of bitterness grow up in your marriage. I see some men that literally hate their spouses. They hate them. They hate them with a passion. How can you claim to be saved and you just literally hate your spouse? I hate her. I've heard the words come out of my mouth. I hate him. I hate her. Hate is such a strong word. The Bible says he didn't hate his brother, sister, brother, call. It basically, you, you're in trouble with God. Amen. You're in trouble with God. Titus chapter number 2 and verse 2 through 4. So it tells us that husbands need to love their wives and be not bitter toward them. Yes, man, you got to love your wife. You married her. And if she's not up to your expectations, that's just too bad. You got to live with that and love your wife. I know it's, uh, this ain't one of them child messes. Because life, marriage ain't no Pollyanna, you know, pie in the sky situation. It's serious. And for too long, church folks, it's changing partners up. She don't like the same vision I got. Men of God cheating on their spouses. Women of God cheating on their husbands. Let's go to the word. Titus 2, verse number 2 through 4. Verse 2. That the aged man be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, and charity, and patience, the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. Teachers of what? Good things. Teachers of what? Good things. Teachers of good things. Go ahead and read. That they may teach the young women to be sober, mm -hmm. to love their husbands. Say, some people got to be taught. Some people got to be taught to love their husbands. Go ahead and read the rest of that. Because you're supposed to also love your children. To love your children. Did you not know that some women, even in the body of Christ, that don't know how to love their husband, nobody ever taught them that. Let me tell you why nobody ever taught them that. Because they was raised in a house where the mom hated the dad and the dad hated the mom. And they came up in an environment where there was so much hate 
and anger and negative words that they don't know how to love their husbands. So somebody has got to teach them how to love their husbands. And it's supposed to be the age women. The age women should not be saying this, child, if that was me, I'd get rid of him. No, they need to tell you how to stick and stay. Fast and pray, stick and stay. That's God's way. That's what the older women need to be telling you. Child, if that was me, I'd be up out of that. See, they ain't want to tell you that they got knocked around, cussed out, and slapped down before their husband got saved too. So why can't you? I ain't saying that. I ain't trying to encourage nobody to go through that. That's right. I'm just trying to say they should tell you to stick and stay. They should encourage you to stick and stay and pray and pray and fast. And let me let y'all know something about these men. These men get dirty and know God got a way of fixing that. And if God fixes it, it's going to be fixed for real. Trust me. You ain't got to live one thing. Let's go to the Word. Amen. James. Go ahead and refinish read that. Teach them to love their husbands and to love their children. Oh, here we go. Before we go any further, sometimes we got to learn how to love our children. Yes, yes, yes. You got to learn how to love your child. That child is your future. That's the beginning of your script. And sometimes children don't do the things that's always wise and pleasing in our sight. We still got to love them. I want us as mounted to understand we always love our children. We don't agree with their mess. That's right. That's right. Now, I'm loving you, but I don't agree with your foolishness. Amen. Sometimes I might need a rod of correction to straighten that out. Yeah. But I still love you. Amen. Children need to understand it. You still love them. But love does not mean it's letting you have your way. Love is not being a doormat for your children. Love is setting parameters for them and guiding them which way to go. Amen. That's what love does. Amen. Let's go with number five. Amen. Somebody got to learn how to listen. If you want to have a happy marriage, you got to learn not only how to be good over here and over there. And good talking, you need to be a good listener. You gotta learn how to be a good listener. Read that. James chapter 1, verse 19. Please read it. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. Swift to hear. Slow to speak. Slow to speak. Slow to wrath. When you're in an argument or confrontation, you ain't being swift to hear. And you're not being slow to speak. So when you're in an argument or verbal confrontation with your spouse and screaming and hollering, you are out of God, you are out of God's will. You just got into the flesh. If you're screaming, if you're hollering, you ain't got to say one cuss word. You are in the flesh because you're not being what? Swift to hear and slow to speak. Drop down to verse 25, please. But whoso looking into the perfect law of liberty and continuing therein, he being not a forget for hearer, but a doer of the work. Men and women in marriage need to understand when your spouse say something from the heart, they mean that and don't forget it. When she says, it hurts me when you do that, then don't do that next week. Y'all right, think I'm joking. Yeah. Me and forget that. She said, it hurts me when you do that. When you, I mean, I don't like picking your clothes up off the bathroom floor. I don't care. She loves cleaning up after me. You keep on believing that. You keep on believing that. When she says, could you leave the toilet seat down? I don't know, it don't matter. It matters to her. Don't forget that little stuff, because that can mess up things in your marriage. When she says, don't disrespect me. When he says, don't disrespect me. When he says, don't disrespect me. Because some women feel like they can disrespect the man and still be in God's will. You can't. Like the man can't be in God's will and disrespect you. And I'm praying that y'all never, I beg you, never, never, never fight in public. I was, I think we had first got married on, I don't know if I had, we had went somewhere. I mean, you know, and I remember seeing people, a couple upset and mad and angry, how, uh, shouting at each other and stuff. It looked so embarrassing. It made both of y'all look like idiots. This is in public. I mean, both of y'all, it don't, it, both of y'all look like y'all need to be on a psych ward somewhere. 
screaming and hollering at each other in public. Learn what I'm saying now. When the neighbors hear you screaming and hollering at your spouse, something wrong with you. You out of God's will. Child, I heard them all the way down the street. Screaming and hollering. Hmm. Wow. Here's another one. Number six. Let no one come between you. Let no one come between you. Genesis chapter 24, verse number 22 and verse 24. See, this is the basic stuff that's going to help out of marriage. Because let me let y'all know something real quick. This is the kind of stuff that people forget. I don't have any male friends. That's my best friend. I mean, I don't have people that I respect and I love. But my best friend is right here. This is my best friend. So if I want to talk about something, about her, I'm going to talk to her. I ain't going to another man and start telling them all about my marital problems. And I sure ain't going to a woman and tell her about my marital problems. This is my best friend. I mean, we eat together, we sleep together. She smell my bad breath when I wake up in the morning. I might as well go and brush my teeth and tell her all about it. <laughs> tell her all about it. Okay, y'all think I'm joking. Men, when y'all get married, learn how to man up and talk to your wife. Talk to your husband. I don't think I'm joking. Okay. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Genesis 2, verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. I'm going to tell mama on you. I'm going to tell daddy on you. Men go to their daddy and tell their daddy all about their problem. Women go to their mother and tell their mother all about it. And some women go to their daddy and tell their daddy all about it. And some men is going to their mother and tell their mother all about it. Oh yeah, you're going to have a bad in-law relationship now. Because after y'all made peace, made up, them in-laws going to be looking at y'all. Looking at you sideways. You coming in there smiling. Hey, how you doing? Doing all right. How you doing? <laughs> yeah. See, they you forgot about it. You and your husband are on one accord, y'all having a good time, and then they remember that a year down the road. And they still holding the grudge. I can't believe she said that to my baby. I can't believe he said that to my baby. In-laws don't forget. <laughs> I don't forget. They don't forget, y'all. Y'all think I'm joking. You got to watch them in-law. They remember. Amen? So let nothing come between y'all. Amen? Matthew chapter 19 and verse 6. Did we read Genesis 2 and verse 24? Okay. Amen. Did we read Genesis 2 and verse 24? That's fine. Let's go back to that and read it again. Amen? Leave the cleave. Leave the cleave, right? Then leave the cleave. You left home to cleave to your wife, right? Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Shall cleave unto his wife. You're leaving mom, you're leaving uh, father, and you're going to cleave unto your wife. You cannot be married <laughs> and still upon your mom and dad. You can't do that. You got to move out and be on your own. Amen? Yes, Lord. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 6. Wherefore, there are no more twain, but one flesh. When therefore God have joined together, let no man put a son. Let no man or woman put a son in that. Amen? Amen. Okay, here's another one. Amen? Number seven. Being in your proper place in the marriage. Oh, Lord. You got to be in your proper place in the marriage. I'm the head. Amen. Me and like walk around. I'm the head. <laughs> I'm the head. <laughs> really? Are you the head for real? Let's go to the word, the word of God and say, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. If you're going to be the head, this is what it means to be the head. You're going to be the head in your marriage. This is what it really means traditionally, according to biblical definition of being the head. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. 
But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he have denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. If a preacher is married and he got his wife going out there and working in the snow and the rain, he ain't got no business preaching to nobody. He has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. All right, preachers. You know, pastor can't get no job. It's been five years now. Pastor ain't looking for no job. Because while last I checked, Walmart's still out there. The car wash is still down the street. So a pastor can't get no job and he's physically able to go get a job. Pastor has denied the faith. If he's sitting back and making babies and expect the church to take care of the babies, Perhaps he may have denied the faith. It could be worse than infidel. See, I'm just being, can I be real with y'all? I'm, I'm a realist. I don't have time to play religious games. The church ain't there when I produce the babies, and I'm not going to ask the church to take care of my babies. Now, y'all still supposed to support your pastor. That's right. You still supposed to pay tithes and offer to God, and you still supposed to bless your leaders too. But it is my responsibility to take care of my children. Right. All right, you can hear light appearing to us, people. So, because when you start talking like this, this this start kicking over sacred cows. Yes, yes. Because men of God is at home seeking the Lord. Yes. Baby, you seeking the Lord at twelve o'clock in the bed. Your wife going to work. Something wrong with that? <laughs> it's cold and rainy out there. And you, baby, you better put something on. You're gonna get a cold. <laughs> You denied the faith, saints. You're worse than infidel. The head means going out there and go and get it and provide for your family. Shall we move on, please? That's a little touchy. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Amen. Come on, me and say amen. Don't be scared. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Amen. The head of every man is Christ. Yes. And the head of woman is the man, mm -hmm. and the head of Christ is God. They love to quote that scripture until it's their turn to be the head. You know what I used to say? If one job won't do, then you better get two. Right. Hallelujah. Right. That'll preach. <laughs> First Timothy chapter 5, verse number 14. I will therefore that the younger women marry. Bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. So the young women need to do what? They need to be guiding the house. I know the men are saying, well, dear baby, we can't do it. We need you out there on that job. You need to be out there working. You need to be out there, you know, you know well, I'm trying my best. You know, I'm only making a certain amount. So I need you to go out and go get it too. If a woman is willing to go out there and go get it, ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with helping your husband out. You know the man of God is doing, the man is doing the best he know how, and you up there at home ain't doing nothing except pulling your thumbs and hey, sleeping at one, two o'clock in the afternoon. Maybe you need to get a job. Maybe you need to do something. Amen. Amen. But in reality, the young women are supposed to get out of the house. They're supposed to get out of the house. A man should never marry to be taken care of. You know, they used to work for, was it a uh, working woman? What they call it? They used to put in the ad in, in the paper, they looking for a working woman. A W, W, a working woman. <laughs> y'all think, think I'm joking. Let me tell y'all something real quick. The average person in church and man of Christian today has been so desensitized by society they believe that you got to have two jobs to make it. Yeah. Have you got, raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. No, you can have one job and make it. Yeah. No, you don't have to have the car with the big rims on it. That's right. You can have one little putt putt and get down, down the road. Yeah. And switch up, swap up, take turns. It's the truth. It's right. And the sad thing about it. It's church folks will tell you you got to have your wife out there working. 
Church folks will tell you, man, you can't make it unless you're out there working out there. Where's that in my Bible? I told you. If one job won't do, then you better get two. I can preach that because I've been there. If one job won't get a job done, I will get two because I'm going to take care of my family. It is your responsibility to take care of the church. Manna, it is your responsibility to take care of the church. It is my responsibility to take care of this woman and all these children. <laughs> no, that's what they call them. They call them children. Children, whatever they call them. They're children. Amen. Okay, a couple more things and we're wrapping it up. Hey, enjoy each other. Y'all don't understand. We gotta learn to enjoy each other in marriage. Y'all, my time with this wife, this woman of God is a blessing. I don't know when God is gonna say that season is over with. I hope it ain't no time soon. Because I'm quite enjoying it. I'm up under no delusions. It's not meant to last forever on this earth. So one day, God is gonna separate us. And I pray and hope it's 30 years down the road. I'm so old I can barely walk. Yes, Lord. And she old, she got to push a little scroll or something. Yes, God. I pray and hope it's that long. But oh, see, in reality, it don't always work out that way. So you got to learn to enjoy your spouse. Life is too short to be an argument and the conflict with your spouse all the time. You don't understand. I kiss my wife goodbye going to work still. Because I don't know what I'm going to make home. I'm in fairly good help by the grace of God. But I ain't no guarantees. I had a brother die at 50. I had a sister die at 50. I'm 52. I have a sister die at 57. I'm believing God for a long life. I am up under no delusions. It ain't no guarantee when you go to sleep that you're going to wake up in the morning. Who told you that? Who promised you a tomorrow? Jesus never promised nobody a tomorrow. He said sufficient is the day and the evil thereof. Hallelujah. So and learn to enjoy your wife. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 9. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest, lovest all the days of... Thou love it, not hate it. Amen. <laughs> Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest, not hate it. Keep reading. All the days of the life of thy vanity, mm -hmm. which he hath given thee under the sun, all the days of thy vanity... For that is the portion in this life and in thy labor which thou hast taken under the sun. Amen. We've dealt with fact number number nine. We've dealt with the fact that marriage is a contract. Marriage is what? A, like a business too, y'all. Y'all do understand that marriage is like a business. So you need to have a business mind a little bit when you're going to marriage because guess what? In reality, whatever me and Mama J accumulate, if the devil tries to separate us through divorce, she's supposed to get hand. A real man going to give you something. If a real man divorce you, he's going to leave you with something. A I said a real man. I ain't say a fake man. A real man is supposed to divide the goods with you. I'm telling y'all what God love. See, but today, don't, people don't want to do that. See, so if you accumulate houses, split the house, sell the house, and take care. If you accumulate cars, sell the cars, she split down the middle, I split down the middle, she get her part, I get my part, keep it rolling. Amen. That's real marriage. But in the day of church, the man get his stuff, he want to go. I'm gone. He don't want to give his wife nothing. He don't want to give his ex-wife nothing at all. But in reality, a real man going to give you something. He ain't going to leave you destitute and broke. A real man ain't going to do that. And me and I want you to always understand this. If you ever leave your wife for whatever reason, you better leave her something. <sighs> if you want to be in right standing with God, you will. And last thing is faithfulness. It's faithfulness. Well, man, no, let's go to Ruth chapter 4, verse number 6. Then with marriage is like a business. Sometimes marriage is like having a business decision that you make. Okay, I told you. There's children involved. There's property involved sometimes. And sometimes you need to figure out why you marry. Okay, God forbid, if something happened to me, 
Mama J got a couple of dollars in her pocket. She need to be careful who she married. Because there's some gold diggers out there. And they ain't interested in your children. They don't even know. They're interested in money. The only thing they're concerned about is money. And guess what? If Mama J die, I might get a couple of dollars too. Guess what? There's some gold diggers out there. They ain't studying my children. They ain't studying me neither. Can, I, can, I, can, can we just stop being fake? And you have gold diggers in church. Them the worst ones. Because you don't know they're gold diggers. You don't see that shovel. That they carry the back of their truck. Y'all laughing. Ruth chapter 4, verse 6. The reason why the first man did not marry Ruth was because he did not want to mar his inheritance. Oh, oh yeah. This is serious, right? Because in our community, we ain't studying that. We want what we want, and we're going to get what we want. Now, this man took the time to say, I am not going to get Ruth because it's going to mess up my inheritance for my children. Ain't that something? Ain't that different? Go ahead and read it for me. Ruth chapter 4 and verse 6. Yes. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar my own inheritance. Redeem thou my right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. If I marry her, I'm going to mess up my inheritance. I already got my inheritance set up. This going to that one. This going to that one. This going to that one. I marry her. Then I got to rearrange everything. Mm. Business. 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 Yeah, yeah. Wow. <clears throat> so you better start thinking before you put a ring on somebody's finger. Because yeah. it's business too. It's business too. It's like a business. People don't want to hear that. You need to hear it. You married this old girl over there? She ain't something about you or your children. You die, she gonna take everything. She ain't leaving your children nothing. You just marred your inheritance. Yes, yes, yes. You just marred your inheritance. <laughs> Last thing is faithfulness, and we're done for the night. Faithfulness. Now what you say, hey, she gets this and they get this. Okay, you can hit that goes over like a because we don't think like that now in, in black community. We don't think like that. No. We don't take the time to think before we get married. How this is gonna affect my children. You had the house set to go over there, you had the house set to go over there, and now you married? She get everything, he get everything. That old snake came in and take everything from your children. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 9. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committed adultery, and whosoever married her, which is put away, doth commit adultery. There are grounds for divorce. And don't you ever think, young men and young women in here, that your spouse has to forgive you. They can forgive you and still let you go. Amen. Baby, I, I know you're sorry. I got to forgive you because I don't want to go to Haiti, but yeah. you out of here. Amen. Peace out. Yeah. <laughs> Peace out. Amen. Amen. Y'all don't, don't get it. A woman don't have to take a man that's committing adultery on her. And Pastor Jones ain't going to never tell you to stay with a man that's committing adultery on you. I'm going to stay out of it. If you want to keep him, I know she's over here, she's over there, she's everywhere. If that's what you want, go for it. I'm out of it. I know he's over there, he's everywhere, he's over here, over there. I'm out of it. That's what you want. That's what you desire to have. I'm out of it. But if she want to say, hey, I'm out of this situation. I'm tired of it. She can't do that. Amen. And being right standing with God. Matthew 5 and verse number 32. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery, and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committed adultery. Oh, Lord. You see how hard it is to get out of these marriages? But today's church, they'll tell you you can change them out for irreconcilable differences and all this kind of crazy stuff. You can't. You cannot do it once you come to the knowledge of God. You can't do that. 
You can't just easily divorce your wife and your husband for any old cause. You can't do that, saints of the living God. And people that does that is going to have to stand before God one day and give an account of what they was doing. Last scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse number 1 to 15. I'm giving you grounds and reason why. See, faithfulness is the number one reason to stay in the marriage, but unfaithfulness causes all these problems. Amen? Amen. First Corinthians chapter number 7, verse 1 to 15. And woman of God, if you're married to a man that ain't faithful, you ain't got you nothing. Man of God, if you're married to a woman of God, a woman that ain't faithful, you ain't got you anything. You don't have a marriage. You don't have a marriage. I don't know what you got. <laughs> Amen. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 through 15. And we're done for the night. Now concerning the things where you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. All right. Plan on getting married. Don't be touching all over. I can touch, I can touch all over her. She mine. We married. We married. We married. Right. But what does it say? Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, mm -hmm. let every man have his own wife. Yes. And let every woman have her own husband. Yes. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. Don't withhold your marital responsibilities to try to hurt them. You're going to want to hurt yourself. You got to render to them due benevolence. Some women use their intimacy as a tool to manipulate their husband. And some men use intimacy as a tool to manipulate their wives. Yeah. They withhold the intimacy when they want them, when they mad. Yeah. You can't do that. You can't, you cannot do that and be in good standing with God. You cannot, you're gonna get in trouble with God, and you can produce adultery in your marriage. Please read. The wife have not power of her own body, but the husband, and likewise also the husband have not power of his own body but the wife. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time that you might give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again that Satan tempt you not for your incontency. So it's important to put yourself uh, to fast and pray and to consecrate yourself. You have the right to do that, and you should, and even in a marriage. You're supposed to do that even in a marriage. Tell your wife, I'm going on consecration. Tell your husband, I'm going to consecration. Yeah. I want you to come my way and you to bring me, you know, pray for me or something like that. That's it. Amen. Amen. Keep reading. But I speak this by permission and not of commandment. For yeah. I would that all men were even as I myself. Wait a minute. Paul said, I wish the men had the discipline to be like me. Mm. Oh, Lord. The average man and woman don't have the discipline to be like Paul. But in reality, that is the best way. Nobody want to hear that. Nobody want to receive that. It's the truth. Okay. Anybody ever had any marriage problems at all? I don't care if it's somebody leaving a toilet seat up or down. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. But see, if you were saying you got to worry about that. Has anybody ever had to tell their wife where they going? Had to tell your husband where you going? Raise that hand up. Amen. Yes, Lord. She, if she is at church. I, if Mama J, no. If she, she could be at revival. It's 11 o'clock. You need to be at this house. And this demon being cast out. Somebody leave him the Holy Ghost. Amen. They just talking. You start walking. <laughs> I'm still the same, and I still the same way. And it, I, I'm, I lighten up as, as I get older because she be having children once in with you. They out there having a good time. Call me eleven o'clock. Wait, 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 wait. What's up? Uh, and then she come in by twelve. I say, y'all, I know somebody got the Holy Ghost. I know some demons got cast out tonight. No, they just they like had ten preachers and they took their. Oh, uh, say, don't go back. Y'all, y'all, y'all think I'm joking. I said, well, she's she supposed to be home with me at night. Right. Unless she's working at night, she'll work it all night long. She need to be in the house with me. That's why I found that. Hallelujah. Yeah, Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> Finish reading that. Amen. Like, Lady like, John. Finish reading. We're done. For I would that all men were even as I myself. Yes. But every man have his proper gift of God, one after this manner and another after that. No. 
Keep reading, keep reading, all the way down to verse 15. I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. But if they cannot contain, let them marry. Keep reading, you have not sinned if you marry, go ahead. For it is better to marry than to burn. Yes it is, keep reading please. And until the married I command ye not I, but the Lord, Yes. let not the wife depart from her husband. I'm just gonna leave. No. I'm leaving him. She ain't no good, she ain't no good, I'm leaving her. What do the Bible say? But if she depart, let her remain unmarried. Now if you leave, if you're bold enough to leave, you can't go get remarried to somebody else. I'm teaching y'all the Bible over here now. See, I'm not, so many times people will leave their spouse at church and then they're going to go and find them somebody else over there at Brother Brother Mean Church. Now you just not got, left your wife six months ago, eight months ago, and you with somebody else. The Bible say what? But if she depart, let her remain unmarried. Remain unmarried. That means she ain't looking for somebody. Don't come lying and say, the Lord sent him to me. You just left him six, you just left your husband six weeks ago. And now y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. You gonna see folks on Facebook talking about they got another boo and they don't know what to do. And it's only been three months since they broke up with their husband and with their wife and they got another boo. I'm like, what kind of pastor do you sit upon? Y'all, I'm in the book. Y'all don't understand. I'm in the Bible. I teach y'all the word. Because this is what we're going to be judged by. And not man's opinion. That's right. What's wrong with being by yourself? If you happen to leave your spouse, why can't you go somewhere and sit down and cool off a little bit? Yeah. Whew, just take a break. Feel good having nobody breathe their bad breath in your face in the morning. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. <laughs> Taking the cover off of you. <laughs> I'm going to want to do that. All right, all right. Finish it up, please. But if she depart, let her remain unmarried. Yes. Or be reconciled to her husband. Yes. And let not the husband put away his wife. Yes. But to the rest be I, not the Lord. Yes. If any brother have a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, yes. let him put her, let him not put her away. Yes. And the woman which have an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Keep reading. Else were your children unclean, but now they are holy. Keep reading. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. It says the unbelieving depart, not the believer. It says the unbelieving depart, not the believer. Why are believers leaving each other? Why are believers getting a voice? They're breaking scripture, y'all. They're breaking scripture. And it's not pleasing to God's sight. How could you be preaching and screaming and running around the church and then you get a divorce from your wife? Your husband next week. Something wrong here. Jesus. You are in an illegal marriage if you marry somebody else. No, no. Better go back and try to make it right with that spouse. Try to fix it with you. Oh, no. I know that's all strange doctrine. If it's strange doctrine, it's the Bible that I'm reading from. Who got a King James Version you're reading from? To read. What type of Bible you read from? Maybe you read from these another space cadet type Bible. I'm reading from the King James Version. We're, we're done. We thank God tonight. We give God the praise tonight for Mary. This is unprecedented. Even though it's getting late, we're going to make quickly. Anyone have